Well, hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. So I think this is going to be a super quick one today. We've got this gorgeous old Sanyo unit and it's an M4200 um, and it's a Sanyo stereo cast with four way power. Um, and there's the original stereo cast sticker on the bottom there that someone taped on when they bought it way back in probably the early 1970s. So I've bought this basically just for a bit of fun. I think it's gorgeous. Um, but I wanted to see if I can get it working. I don't believe it does work. Very simple unit. There's no radio. It's literally just a cassette player. So you've got your transport mechanisms along the top. Stop, play, fast forward, rewind and record. You've also got a tone selector, which is just high or low. And then you've got the output here is mono or stereo. So um, one of them controls the left channel, which I believe is the mono master. So you can either have mono or stereo, and I think that's just stereo headphone out just there. But other than that, there's not a great deal to report. You've got the aux there, um, your mic and the remote, and an external speaker out there as well. So um, not badly equipped, to be fair. Um, nicely lined handle there, in good condition. It's quite weighty, it feels really solid. Now, when I bought this, um, I believe the tape mechanism doesn't work. And also it said that the chrome was peeling off as well. Now, with regard to the tape, we'll check that in a moment. And with regard to the chrome, I can see all this kind of mess along the top, but I think that's just sticky residue. So if we're careful, we should be able to get rid of a lot of that. There are some scratches, of course, after 50 odd years, but um, I think this will probably come off. Now then, with regard to the tape door, I think I could be wrong and I'm, I'm kind of hopeful, but it says the chrome is coming off, but I don't know if this was actually the protective film that was over the door originally that's been left on. So I'm trying to decide whether or not to be brave and try to actually peel this off and clean it up or whether actually it's part of the factory finish. And if I start peeling it off, I might even make it worse. So I haven't quite decided that yet, but in the first instance, let's just see if we can actually get the thing running. So I've got a power adapter for this and not sure if it's actually the right one, but we'll find out in a minute. Oh yeah, there we go. Well, something's happening. It made a noise. So let's just eject that a minute, uh, which is just pulled down on this one. It's a mechanical, uh, sorry, manual. There you go, like so. And if we press play, there is noise. none of the spindles are being driven although there are they do move they do move manually so they're not frozen or seized um let's just see if the cap stands turning at all no okay so i'm hopeful that the belt well i say hopeful that the belts come off i'm assuming it is probably the belt um and hopefully if that's the case it either snapped or slipped off and hasn't just turned to goo and gum inside the unit so anyway not much else we can see now, so let's get it open and have a look inside. Right, well, I've never been in this one before, so here we go. To be honest, I don't know if anyone's ever been in here because, yeah, well, A, there's an absolute pile of dust under the screws, so that's never been opened, I don't think. The thing is, though, you see, these things, they, they were off their time, and so... They were used for a while and I dare say that eventually either technology had moved on or there was no need for it in the house anymore or it maybe it started playing up and the belt was slipping or something um, and maybe it got put up in the loft and forgotten about and that was that, you know. Um, the thing is as well, of course, with this particular unit is it's not a radio cassette, it's just a cassette player. So, of course, if the tape goes wonky on it, it's no good to anyone. Whereas at least if it was a radio cassette, people might say, oh, the tape doesn't work anymore, but they'll still leave the radio on in the kitchen or or whatever, you know? Um, but of course, if the tape's gone, then no one's gonna be able to use it at all. So I'm just gonna check, uh, actually, no, I think this screw has to come out as well on these units. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But we'll find out. 
Now that one does give us access to the voltage switch there, but I think that's all there is to come off now. The battery contacts are really clean actually, they look beautiful. A little bit dusty in there, we've got the uh, slightly decomposed foam, but other than that, I've got to say, it looks really nice. So, okay, where are we at? So we've got the, the screws out. Now, I'm gonna pull the knobs off like so. They've probably never been off before. Don't know if we needed to, but one less thing to think about. So after a few minutes of trying to be super careful and figuring it out, it turns out that what you have to do is squeeze back. Well, I haven't still got it off yet, actually, to be fair, but I've just popped, there's two, three tabs, two tabs on the back there. Gosh, that was super tricky to get out. There we go. Right, okay, what's on there? So, gosh, that was a, uh, that was really quite tricky in the end. Um, essentially, it was five screws, and then you sort of press away from the unit to, the, to depress these two tabs, and eventually it pops out. So that was really harder than I expected it to be. However, however, good Lord, this looks like it's brand new inside. It's never been open, I don't think. Um, oh, da -da -da, and that'll be why, there we go. Can you see? Let me just zoom in. So, A, just look how clean. Actually, I'll back out. Just look how clean this unit is. It's gorgeous. The speaker there. Flywheel. The old circuit board. The old power transformer and, and all of that stuff just on there. Look, gorgeous. Wow. Super, super, super clean. And one of the uh, the upsides of being as tight as that was just now to open is there's barely any dust in here because uh, I don't think the dust would have found its way in, um, even if it wanted to. Anyway, good news. We can get to these potentiometers if we want to, to give them a clean. Um, we don't know how clean they even are yet, but the, the better news is, look how slack that belt is. So we know, we know that that was never going to work. And also we can test that by just moving the the motor incidentally that's good news in itself that the motor spindle turns and hasn't seized but i'm spinning that quite nicely and that's not having any effect on the belt whatsoever because that belt that belt's just well look at it it's just had it so um getting the belt off will be easy enough one would hope um he says we may need to just um get this plate off first but that's not a problem. That's probably a auto stop or something on there. Right, anyway, let's just get this, get this belt off. So, screw number one, screw number two, and the plate can come away. And there is the belt, easy as pie. <laughs> So if ever there were, um, yeah, oh, a little love heart or something, look at the state of that, honestly. I mean, good Lord. Um, that is a mess. That really is an absolute mess. I've never seen one quite so distorted, actually. Um, they do tend to, with time, they do deform and take on the shape of the uh, of the running system that they're in. So, um, yeah, no surprise. That's, that's really quite bad. Um, Downside for me at the moment, I'm not convinced I've actually got one the right size to put on this after all that. So I may, I may even have to go and source one. Um, however, look at this, how beautiful. So I'm just gonna give it a bit of a dust inside, run some switch cleaner through the potentiometers and stuff. Um, but other than that, easy as pie. So if ever you wanna have a look at a Sanyo M4200, that's what you need to do. Just out of interest, I'm just going to put um, six volts DC into this at half an amp, maximum half an amp, I should say, and just see if it actually turns the motor. One moment. Yeah. So we can hear a bit of noise there from the motor. So what we'll do is we'll put a bit of oil on that, I think. 
I'm just going to draw a little bit of light oil now onto the spindle. See if we can uh, clean this up a little bit. And that was play, I think. There we go. Beautiful. So it was just a bit dry, hadn't been run for ages. And um, we're just working that in. And I think I might just put one more, one more little drop. Like I say, it's not a massive amount. It doesn't need to be flooded with oil. Oops, so Daisy, it just needs, it just needs a little bit in there. Did you hear how it got quicker as well? It started to speed up. That's great. So I'm not sure if it's a, it's a bit of a chicken and egg because sometimes it can be, I'll just stop that now. In fact, it was running so silently then you could barely hear it. Um, it's a chicken and egg sometimes because you can, if the belt packs up and it gets put away, then the motor will start to stick and seize because it's not being turned. But conversely, of course, if the motor's playing up and sticking and it interferes with the tape mechanism, then people will park it up and then the, the belts will start to dry out or stretch or whatever. So, um, yeah, so I'm not sure what happened first, but either way, I expect the belt went. But now at least, that's beautiful. Yes, yeah, so that funny noise that you could hear, it was actually a mechanical noise. So we've, we've sorted that. So if we press play again, that's gorgeous just the job so we literally now just try and need to find ourselves um a new belt if we can find one what i can do is just clean the um clean the running surfaces of the belt anyways so i'm just going to put some isopropyl alcohol there just on the uh, on the running surfaces so i'll just get in here this won't have been cleaned in quite some time not too bad, but I also just wanted to make sure that I hadn't got any oil in there either. So I'm just literally cleaning, cleaning inside the pulleys. It can get quite brittle as well, so just gonna make sure that's nice and clean in there. It's still got to be gentle. You can see that some some gunk has come out of there. Right, and also just the flywheel itself, do the groove for that. Again, a little bit, but not too bad. And the grease is still really good, actually, on the uh, the bearing there, so that's, that's fine. Right, okay. Okay, well, I've put a belt on. That's all good stuff. That's on now and running nicely. So I've just hooked up some power and we'll try it out. So, there we go. That looks like it's running fairly true. Okay, so this thing hasn't probably played the tape in 30 years or something. So this will be literally the first time ever. Haven't cleaned the heads or anything yet, but the rest of the unit is so clean that just for testing purposes, I'm just gonna use this old tape. See what happens. Well, it's going round, and there's your volume. Perfect. And stop, fast forward. No fast forward. And no rewind. Okay, so it's playing. Um, but yeah, basically, I've just managed to um, to find a, uh, a belt that fits. Um, this one's much nicer. Um, I tried it before. I just tried to put it through in a direct loop and obviously got play. And that played beautifully, which was ace, because what that means is all the rest of the, the, um, the heads, the amplifiers and the speaker and everything else does work. That's marvellous. So um, I then managed to find a slightly bigger belt anyway and looped it. There's actually another pulley behind this circuit board here. Um, you won't be able to see that, I dare say, but um, it's tucked away in the depths down there. 
there's a third one if you can see the belt behind there so yeah so we had to had to kind of just poke around and do that with a bit of a cocktail stick um to do that because what i didn't want to do if i didn't have to was to start messing around with the original wiring and everything else i mean you can see all the original um connectors and tie bands and everything else and it'd be a shame to have had to have taken out all of that stuff just to wrap a band around one pulley so we did manage to get away with it um anyway the good news is let's have a look um that should all be working now so if we press if we press play now There we go, and stop, fast forward. And I'll just bring that into view so you can see it. But fast forward is working at rocket speed. And rewind, beautiful. Obviously it'll run nicer once the, uh, once the cover's back on the, uh, on the flywheel, we'll get that tied back down. So um, yeah, that literally is it. So what I'm gonna do now is just, um, as I say, put the uh, put the, the cover back on the uh, on the flywheel, and um, and then we'll just put some potentiometer cleaner in there, get that done, and zip it back up. I think. Incidentally, I do like the design of this. You've got um, you've basically got like a nylon bushing which you can oil or grease, um, but it's on a spring there, so it's kind of self-regulating, which is kind of cool. Um, obviously, the more if you were to put too much pressure on, then the spring acts backwards and also the spring will fall back in if there are insufficient um, tension and obviously as the bearing wears so it will actually start to work back onto the flywheel and, and provide its own pressure so it's kind of self-regulating um don't see that so much in the new stuff in the new uh, stereo so um yeah i like that so anyways just a quick um a quick little bit of uh, spray cleaner inside the potentiometers and we'll be good to go Right, we're just going to clean the heads real quick and the pinch roller. Honestly, I can't wait till uh, the daylight tomorrow to show you the reveal once I've given this a good clean. It's a beautiful piece of kit. It really is. So we press play sort of halfway just to expose the, uh, expose the pinch roller just there. So I'll just get on and clean that with the old um, Q-tip with some alcohol. So a moderate amount of gunk has come off of the uh, of the pinch roller, but I'm just doing the heads now as well. So we've got the play head there and the erase head. Just give them a few passes with some uh, isopropyl alcohol. So some careful scraping and soaking. We've got all the, uh, the residue now, all those stickers and the goo has come off. We're in harsh light, of course, now direct light on the aluminium, but that was covered in old, like literally 40 year old stickers or something that dried out. So we've managed to, to get the worst of that off. Next thing then, is I'm gonna be brave now. Um, I think given that the idea was, I think the chrome was supposed to have been lifted on this when I bought it, but I think the actual original protective layer was still on the, uh, was still actually on the chrome, on the brush stainless steel. So I'm just going to peel this back like so, and I've got a little bit of IPA and I'm hoping that that will dissolve the adhesive because obviously over the years, the, um, there you go, the adhesive will have dried off. Look at that, that's definitely coming up. That's good. All right. Now the thing is, you see, you always have an option when you're re restoring and repairing things, you've always got the option or the choice. Do I leave that on because it's original protective film from all those years ago? Or do you actually say, no, I want this to look nice. I want it to be, um, I think it actually looks better. I think personally, it's gonna look better without it because it was already lifted and looking scruffy. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe this off, ready for the reveal tomorrow. And so here it is, the Sanyo M4200 stereo cast cassette player. Absolutely beautiful. It weighs a ton. It's so brilliantly made. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to work on, I must admit. Really saw the potential in this one. When I bought it, it didn't work at all. The um, 
play did not work, or fast forward or rewind didn't work. Um, everything basically was controlled from one belt, which had gone. So we've replaced the belt, cleaned the heads, uh, just cleaned all the running gear. Um, we also ran some switch cleaner just through the pots and checked the tape mechanism and all that kind of thing. And it's an absolute beauty. It's been lovely. So it turns out then what you've got is a, um, this is your volume control there, but you've also got a switch here with a separate volume, which enables stereo if you were to use the external speaker. And I've tried it out. It works fine because um, I put some headphones in there, some stereo headphones, and it's really weird, but equally fantastic because you, you literally just have the, uh, have one channel, I think it was the uh, the right one was working there in mono. And then when you turn the stereo one on, it goes into stereo mode and you get the, uh, obviously you get the other speaker as well. So fantastic bit of kit. What I also love about it, it's so old school. I mean, look at the eject, it's, it's manual, but it feels amazing. In fact, I'll put a tape in. And the other thing is about it as well is that it's got some really nice metal catches in there to hold the tape. So it's really solid when it goes in and then clunk, nice solid clunk there. And we'll just press play now actually and see what's on there. Oh, there we go. Some uh, treacherous music there, something with peril. Um, but um, there we go. So it's, but it does sound lovely, I've got to say. And it sounds amazing through the headphones. So we'll just play and um, we'll just rewind it. And that works brilliantly, fast forward. Equally brilliantly. So really fast, really smooth, really quiet. Just a lovely piece of kit. And I'm so glad I worked on it in the end. Um, with regard incidentally to the, um, the, the covering on the tape, you can see how well that came up. Um, we did brave it. Look, there's the, um, there's the plastic that came off the uh, cassette door that's been on there for probably 50 years. So we cleaned that off and got the residue off with some isopropyl alcohol. Um, but you'll be pleased to know, um, with regard to the original stereo cast sticker that they put under there, I've cleaned it up, but also put the sticker back on there um, just for old time sakes, just so that it can keep a bit of its identity. It's freshly serviced, works an absolute treat, sounds great. It's a gorgeous bit of kit. And um, yeah, there she is. That's another one for the collection. So thanks very much for watching. Please do subscribe and uh, hit the notifications bell. We've got plenty more boom boxes. We've got personal stereos, eight track stuff, lots of things that we're working on, some big, some small. But I hope you've enjoyed watching this and um, thanks very much for your time. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.